This lesson covers the various types of trust and the Kerberos protocol. Prior to Active Directory, NTLM was the primary protocol used for authentication. There were many challenges with NTLM. It was not a very fast protocol, and every single time a client tried to access a server, a member server to access maybe a file, a printer, the emphasis was on that server being connected to to contact a domain controller for verification of that authentication request and that authorization. So that added load on that server holding the resource. There was also no way to support delegation of authentication for servers to authenticate with each other. So Kerberos changes this. You may know Kerberos is this three-headed dog guarding the gates of Hades, but each of those heads represents one part of the Kerberos protocol. You have the domain controller, the key distribution center. You have the client trying to access a resource and you have the server that has that resource. When the client logs onto the domain, they originally authenticate, their password is converted to an encryption key, and the end result is that KDC, that domain controller, gives that client a ticket granting ticket, a session key they can use for future requests. Now when a client wishes to talk to a member server to maybe access that file, it actually sends a request to that domain controller, that key distribution center, containing that ticket granting ticket and the server it wishes to talk to. The domain controller then decrypts that ticket and gives that server back a session key that that client can use to talk to the server and also a ticket to actually give to that server that's been encrypted by that key distribution center. So then the client talks to that server with the resource and gives them the ticket that they acquired on their behalf from that domain controller, that key distribution center, and then they have a trusted client server session. So Kerberos avoids the need for that server to ever have to go and talk to the domain controller every time someone's trying to access. And the reason Kerberos is so important is that transitive nature, that delegation, is what enables all our different types of trust. Now most likely in Active Directory, if you only have a single forest, you're not going to have to manually create trust, which you often had to do in the NT4 days. By default, as we talked about, all of the domains within a tree share a parent-child trust, which is automatically created at a time of domain creation, between the parent and the child. Likewise, if we have multiple trees within a forest, there is a tree root trust between those two top level trees, or three level trees, however many you have. If you do have separate AD forests, which is not common at all, but if you did have that maybe for an acquisition, you can create this forest root trust. And all of these are Kerberos, which means they're all transitive. By default, all of these domains are trusting each other. Now you may notice I have this special shortcut trust. Now, this is something you manually create. You don't have to create these. But imagine the scenario where this domain down here wishes to authenticate maybe a resource over from this domain. The way it works with the Kerberos, it basically has to hop each time getting a referral between all these different domains. So that's a lot of authentication requests, a lot of redirections. When I create this shortcut trust between these two, they can now directly communicate and authenticate. So it just saves time. It makes the authentication more efficient. I then have this external trust. So the external trust would be, for example, to a non-active directory domain, maybe an NT4 domain. And that is then not transitive. So only the domains that are part of that trust would trust each other and can access resources, share authentication. A domain over here, for example, would not be able to leverage that trust, would not be able to authenticate and use resources in that domain. Trusts are typically one-way or bi-directional. All of the trusts within Active Directory are bi-directional. Each of these domains trust each other. But for these external type trusts, you can select is it bi-directional or unidirectional. If a trust is unidirectional, essentially one domain is trusting the other. So for example, this domain here maybe is trusting this domain over here. So if the trust relationship is flowing this direction, it means users from this external domain, i.e. the trusted, can be given access to resources in the trusting domain. Essentially, this domain is trusting this domain to do a good job to make sure it's authenticating properly. But users from this domain could not be added and given access to resources in this domain over here. That trust relationship would have to be made bi-directional. 
This concludes the lesson on trust types.